So are you going to the Woolpack tonight to hear these results then, Betty? Well, I'm going to have to, aren't I, seeing as how I'm on committee what's organising calendar. Well, I'm going, but not that I'll get on it, of course. Yeah. Me neither. Well, my interest is purely professional. Have we really got time for chatting, ladies? And gentlemen, we've got a very big rosette target to achieve this morning. Yeah. Tell us about it. We didn't think it was altogether realistic. Oh, it is, if you stop wasting time. We will not achieve it, however, by defacing our raw material. I was uh, just experimenting with some uh, different images for Mr Pollard. Moustache and glasses? Yeah, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the intellectual look. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, oh. Not a lot. It is my husband's press launch this afternoon. An occasion of vital importance, not just to him, but to all those constituents who will benefit from him being elected. Indeed. We need these rosettes. Now get on with it. Excuse me. Oh, ow! I've cut myself now. Oh, sorry. Here, put some disinfectant on it. No, it's all right. I'll live. Ow. Should you be doing that in here anyway? Why can't you do it at home? Well, we've no water, so what's the matter with it? Man can't come till this afternoon. All our agents are busy. It's more like the FBI and the water board. Well, you better hurry up, cos I've got a job to do. I'll be back in one minute. I don't see why you had to change the uh, venue at the last minute, Glynis. I was perfectly happy with the hotel we already had. Trust me, Gloria, dear, it was actually a very inferior hotel. The North Park Hotel would suit us much better. The North Park Hotel? Yes. The new venue for our press launch. I don't want to go there. Why, Eric, you grumpy old thing. I've been on the phone for hours arranging it. He's merely expressing an opinion, Glynis. You don't like the North Park. It's not that. Eric is very fond of the North Park Hotel. No, I'm not. I've never been there in my life. Yes, you have. We've had a meal there. Oh, oh yes, I, I forgot. I've spent some of the best nights of my life in that hotel. I just think it could be a little bit small for a press launch. Hmm, I don't agree. I've never had any complaints about size. And it's so intimate. Pity you've never spent a night there, Gloria. Oh, my hotel days are done, Glynis, It's because I have Eric. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps we should just go and do it. Uh, uh, prepare for the actual launch. Oh, he's always so forceful, isn't he? <laughs> Terrible having no water. I suppose you couldn't even wash your breakfast things up. No, I couldn't have a wash. Couldn't brush my teeth. Couldn't flush the toilet. Sure. Well, it was horrible. You know, it's amazing isn't it? How, how dependent we get to be on these things. I mean, I'll never forget when Mac turned off the electricity just before Viv was going to open a calf. Tea the panic! What's the matter? You hadn't paid him, had you? Well, no, but it was a really nasty thing to do. Oh, no. What? What? We haven't paid him either. Oh, the slime ball! The skunk, the scabby little... What will you do? Well, we paid up. I mean, that was a crisis. Well, we're not paying. No, no way. Trisha, get on the phone to the water board, stop them from coming over. They'll probably find us if they find it's been tampered with. But how are we going to get our water back on? Maybe, maybe Lisa will help us, I don't know, but we're not paying that bill. Hello. Are you staying with us tonight, Mrs Pollard? Uh, no, not tonight, though you never know. No, I'm here for the launch of Mayor Pollard's press campaign. It's just started. He's standing for Parliament. Exciting. <laughs> so, you'd be the wife of an MP? Well, hopefully, yes. Anyway, we're in the Albert Room. I'm sure he'd appreciate any extra little attention you were able to pay him today. I'd be glad to, Mrs Pollard. I'll come through with you right away. So, <laughs> I, Eric Pollard, hereby stand for Parliament as leader of P.A.L. Party against landfill. Thank you, thank you. I will, of course, be going through my policies in detail later on, but in the meantime, if there's anybody that would like to ask any... Uh... Ask any... Questions? Yes. <laughs> yes, questions. So... Mayor Pollard, the story is that you gave the late Harry Partridge MP the kiss of life, and this kept him going until he reached the hospital. Yes, where unfortunately he subsequently expired. 
However, it did prolong his life long enough for his dear lady wife and family to make their fond farewells. A great man. A very great man. And I'm honoured to attempt to follow in his footsteps. Well, not by expiring, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why don't you give us a demonstration of your first aid techniques? Well, I don't think... The... Surely the issues in my husband's manifesto are... Oh, I think are... that's an excellent idea. And it would give us some marvellous photos. I will volunteer myself to play the part of the suffering victim so that Mayor Pollard can demonstrate resuscitation. No! I think perhaps as Mayor Dear Pollard... Gloria, this is but a small sacrifice for a dedicated campaign manager to make. Come on, then, get on with it. Oh. Ooh, we've been waiting for you two to come in. Do you hear that, Sydney? Popular. We want our water turned back on. Oh, no, your water gone off, is it? Useless, that. One of those things you really can't do without. Well, we could do without the comedy routine, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, you know very well it was you that turned it off. Turned it off? Why would we do that? I think they've got us mixed up with someone else, mate. Still in your stock, like, you know, perhaps we don't. Yeah, for a small fee. Say, yeah, uh, 7,000 pounds? Yeah. Get lost. We offer a bit of help. Yeah, and it gets thrown back in your face, eh? Still, never mind, eh? Let's have a drink, eh? Yeah, cheer ourselves up. Two pints, please, Bob. Well, come on in the barman. Don't worry, Trish, we're not beaten yet. Slower than usual. I'll pour the tea. No, you won't. Sit yourself down. I'll pour tea. Come on, have a chocolate digestive. Oh. Go on, have another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been so kind to me, Betty. You and Seth. We are two of the kindest people I've met. Well, you can't have known many then, can you? Oh, we've done now. You have, I'll always remember you. We haven't died, have we? <laughs> no, it's, it's just. I think it's time I moved back to my bed set. I'm better now, and I've been here a long time. So, what's it like, this bed set, then? It's cosy. I've got a lovely view from one of the windows. You can almost see the park. I go jogging there, feed the ducks. It's all lovely. Yeah, I'm very happy there. Good, good. Yeah, and I know I can be a bit of a... So, I really think I should move back home. Yeah, well, we'll see about that, love, cos we want to make sure you're completely better first, right? Six tins, is it, Edna? Yes, I'm stocking up. Not that there's anything to do with you. Just making conversation. Mm. Oh, hello, Mrs Birch. Hello. There are such terrible drivers on the road. Two people nearly crashed into me on the way back from the cash and carry. Look down there, Emily, in the storeroom. So, in another hour, we'll be finding out who's going to be on the village calendar. <laughs> yes, the vicar was counting all the votes last night. It took him hours. And I don't suppose you could possibly tell no, me... No, I couldn't. Now, the dog food, please. This brand is very expensive. Let me go and have a look, see if it's on special offer this week. Mrs Hope, that sounds suspiciously like a bribe to me. Well, you've mistaken your woman. I wouldn't betray the vicar for any amount of dog food. Shall I see if Mayor Pollard wants anything now, Mrs... Madam? I see you've guessed our little secret. Oh, I'm very discreet, madam. Well, I'm sure you are. What is he doing in here? Anything I can get for you, Mayor Pollard? No. Just let me know if there is. Mrs... Madam here has told me to make sure you have everything you need. I have. And uh, if you do need a room for the night, Mayor Pollard, just let me know. Thank you. Um, why did you tip that bellboy, Glynis? I hope that wasn't out of campaign funds. Oh, no. It's just a private matter. I'm feeling very generous at the moment. Must be the sweet smell of success. Mm -hmm. I just want to say I'm looking forward to our exclusive interview tomorrow. Exclusive interview? Yeah. Uh, Glynis has promised me personal stuff, she said. Hmm. Right. <laughs> wow. 
what the hell do you think you're doing? Whatever do you mean? Exclusive interview. I never promised to give an exclusive interview to anyone, least of all personal stuff. Oh, and I thought it was such a good idea. I'm sure Jeff would love to hear what the private life of a parliamentary candidate is really like. There is plenty to do, you know. Yes. Sorry, my love. Just telling Eric about my new campaign strategy, Gloria. Nothing for you to worry about. Oh, Seth. Oh, I'm so glad you're back, love. Cos Laurel's just told me that she'll be moving out soon, back to a bed sit. You're not well enough, is she? Well, no, she isn't, but it's not just that. I mean, I can tell by just listening to her that that bed sit of hers is a right horrible, poky little place and certainly not suitable for a nice young girl like her. You don't want her to go, do you? Oh, I'm just being silly, aren't I? I feel the same. Oh. Oh, I'm so glad I thought it were just me. But, well, I've, I've grown right fond of her. Can't we persuade her to stop a bit longer? Well, maybe, but shh, I can hear her coming down. Don't say anything just now. We don't want to scare her off. You'll sour the beer. No, I wish I could. Don't worry, Tricia. Phone calls have been made. Plans have been set in motion. Is our food ready yet? Marla? It's on its way. You want your steak underdone now, would you, Mac? Maybe we're not so popular after all. You speak for yourself. I've just sent a certain Andrew Reynolds a beginning face bunch of flowers. <laughs> flowers? It's always a sign of desperation, that. Yeah, do you remember that blonde bird up in North Allerton? You sent her flowers. Got you nowhere. And Olga, when she dumped you, you sent her flowers too. Made no difference. So what are you doing towards our little bet then, Romeo? I don't need to send flowers. I've got looks and charm. Sex appeal. I have got youth, mate. You've also got the next run of it. We'll see. Makes no difference. I'll just take you out to the car. What is going on? This hotel, the bellboy, the life-saving bit, Jeff. It's as if you wanted Glory to find out about us. About our affair, you mean? It is not an affair. Yes, it is. Glory would certainly see it that way, wouldn't she? If she knew about it, but she doesn't, and she's not going to, because I don't want her to. Well, frankly, I don't see any problem with you it. You don't? No. We're going to have to tell her sometime. No, we are not. Gloria is my wife. My marriage means more to me than... Glynis, what is it you really want? You mean you don't know? I want you, Eric. I want us to be together always. I'm in love with you. I'll, uh, I'll get that. Oh, thanks. Cheers, boss. The uh, flowers were a bit of a surprise. I don't think you're the type. Well, beneath this rough exterior. Beats a very calculating heart. Oh! Are you sure you don't want any favours doing? Wouldn't be the first time a female cop has been sweetened with a bunch of flowers. You know, I thought there was a bit more history behind us than I had you. Didn't you? No, the uh, truth is, I've just remembered what's a uh, very sexy lady you are. Well, you know what you are, don't you? No, not really, but thanks anyway. One steak, one chicken and ham pie. Oh, at last! Well, everything comes to my weights, eventually. I hope it chokes you. Your food's arrived. Oh. Come enjoy this. No, thanks. I've just had a very long, hard day. Not that there's anything new there. I think I'll just have a quiet drink on my own. Oh, right. Uh, <clears throat> well, maybe I'll catch you later. Don't tell me. She's allergic to flowers. No, 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 no. She loved them. It's just, you know, sitting with a pair of her, she wasn't really fancy right now. Vicar not here yet, then? Not yet, my love. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't expect to be first, but in the first three, maybe. <laughs> Mom, don't be embarrassing. Oh, in my poll, you'll always be first. Oh, you're such a charmer. Go and get me a rum and coke, and then we can chat about which month we think we should be in. Can I suggest February? Because you're my Valentine. No. Oh. <laughs> no, because it's shortest. <laughs> Mmm, I'm gonna really miss your cooking, Betty. 
And we'll certainly miss you, love. Hey, the steam treacle pod for afters. <laughs> Good job I run. <laughs> That's how I keep my figure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've been thinking, love, when you move out, um, do you think you'll still be able to give us hand over at Pom? Oh, yeah. I could carry on with that if it would help. In fact, I'd love to. <laughs> oh. And and then, um, I mean, if you ever get tired, keep making the journey in, you could always stay over with us, you know, for the odd night, now and again, cos uh, there's always the spare room. And, um, well, we would offer it to you, like, Full time as our lodger, like only we do know how attached you are to your bedsit. Really? Would you really let me be your lodger? Oh, Betty, Seth, if you're really sure I wouldn't be a nuisance, I'd love to. Right, that's settled then. <laughs> okay, now eat up, everybody, and then we're over to that pub. <sighs> Just have a word about Mac. What is this? First flowers, and now you. You're not playing Cupid, are you, Sid? <laughs> Wrong shake, Bob. No, uh, listen, I just wanted to warn you. We had we had a silly little bet earlier. 20 quid said he couldn't get a date with you, so don't take him too seriously. All right, so that's it. And watch your angle, because I'm not that gullible, you know, or that fragile. No, but you uh, might have said yes to one date. <laughs> just don't want him to win. No, neither do I, really. Do you fancy going on a date with me, young Sydney, right now? Oh, yeah. Go on, then. That'd be great. Yeah, well, you don't have to overdo it. I'll just see if I've got to take my clothes off for the church fund and then uh, we'll be off. That's some excuses. I voted for you. Uh. OK, everyone, the vicar's arrived. The results of the poll for the village calendar Ooh. will be announced in five minutes. <laughs> oh, I'd forgotten all about that. What with all the trouble with me, Walter? <laughs> Do you know, I've had a really good idea about which photographer to use for the calendar. How about Ryan, who's got the exclusive contract on my Donna? Well, it'd certainly be good to have a professional on it. He's a, a very pricey, normally, of course, but I'm sure I could uh, pull a few strings. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Vic. <laughs> that's my place, clinched in the top three. I know. Hello. I've done it. Easy enough for the right tool. Eureka! You mean we've got our water back on? Oh, gallons of it. Woo! Yeah, drink for Lisa. I'll get one for Sydney now. Hey, I helped. All of a while going break. Good news to the Marx Brothers over there. <laughs> hey, hello. 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 How are you? Well, I hope everything was to satisfaction, gentlemen. Is it all right? Oh, I'm so pleased. Anora, you'll be relieved to hear that our little problem with the water's been rectified. That's right. Lisa switched it back on for us. It didn't cost us a penny, much less. Ooh, seven thousand pounds. <laughs> Don't worry, Sidler. Thought of another idea how to deal with our friend Mark. Actually gave me the idea himself. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the long-awaited results. Ah, oh, that's what we want to hear. Oh, Bob, I'm so excited. <laughs> Honestly, this is supposed to be a celebratory drink. Whatever is the matter with you two? Nothing the matter with me. Unless you've got something on your mind, Harry. No. Nothing's the matter, my love. Just tired, that's all. Bad enough. <laughs> and finally, everyone's support for the calendar's been fantastic, oh. so thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> and now, on with the results. Oh, hey. In first place, our very own barmaid, Louise Appleton. Oh, oh. Oh. This thing people have got about blondes. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe Atkinson, second. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Letitia Daggett, third. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that means I'm not even in the top three. Fourth, Charity Tate. Oh, yeah. oh. Fifth, Trisha Stokes. Yeah. Oh, thanks, everyone. Thanks. <laughs> Sixth. Diane Blackstock! Yeah. Yeah. What an old man like me! <laughs> Seventh, Emily Dingle! Yeah. Oh, very much. Who am I? You'll be my angel. Eighth, Donna Windsor! I don't want to be in it. No, I don't think this is a suitable thing for a schoolgirl. Oh, shall I not count you then? Oh, right, well, in that case, um, eighth, Cynthia Daggett! <laughs> Ninth, Lisa Dingle! Yeah. Yeah. That's the ding of water. <laughs> Tenth, 
Laurel Potts. Oh, I am glass. Eleventh, Nicola Blackstock. Yeah. And last, but certainly not least, Betty Eggleton. Yeah. <laughs> that were me voting. Well, me and a few feathers, I know. <laughs> you should have more dignity at your time in life, Betty Eggleton. Oh, sure, no. I'm not in it. I'm not even there. What about Vivian Vicker? Perhaps you've made a mistake. Oh, uh, Viv's our reserve, I think. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Mrs Stokes' is reserve. Uh, Angie, your second reserve. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Viv, your third reserve. Third reserve? I demand a recount. Now then, <clears throat> where were we? Oh, yeah. I feel a bit sick after eating that steak. I feel fine. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so do I. Which is a shame, actually, because I've got a date waiting for me over there. Date? Yeah, still. Expect I'll struggle through. <coughs> oh, uh, you owe me 20 quid, mate. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, there'll be no recount. The results were clear and final. It was reeked. Bob, you should have bought me some votes. Could have did. Right. I'll go and get us another drink. Listen. We will never be together as you so put it. I will never give Gloria up for you. And if you can't accept that, then maybe you'd better retire from this campaign. But without my cooperation, there will be no campaign. What do you mean? I mean, Eric, that I have so... Shall we say intimate knowledge about you? Which I'm sure will be of great interest to Jeff in this interview tomorrow. So you see, Eric, it's either me or total ruin. <laughs> <laughs> 